In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up G-Sync, FreeSync, Adaptive Sync, or VR, depending on what's available from your monitor and your GPU, as quickly as possible so you can get up and running and test this out for yourself as quickly as possible. Just copy the settings for your PC, get up and running, and enjoy using a properly set up G-Sync, FreeSync, or VR experience. Stop paying full price for Windows today and get activated from as little as $16 using WhoKeys. Use the links in the description down below, choose from Windows 10, Windows 11 or office keys, add to checkout, use code PAN20 at checkout for an additional 25% off your order and to help support the channel, pay via a secure payment method including PayPal, once purchased your key will be available immediately, head over to activate Windows, paste the key, will then have access to all Windows features and no more watermark. The Windows 10 keys will also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11. Use the links in the description down below and a massive thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. Step number one starts with your physical monitor. Access the monitor settings by using the physical buttons, somewhere in the settings you'll be able to find the option for G-Sync, G-Sync Compatible, FreeSync, FreeSync Premium Pro, Adaptive Sync, VRR or Variable Refresh Rate. These all do the same thing, so regardless of what option is available in your display, once you see one of these, enable it. Next up, go to your desktop, right click and access your Nvidia Control Panel, AMD Radeon Control Panel or Intel Arc Control Panel, depending on the GPU you have. First up, for those of you on Nvidia GPUs, start by going to the left hand side to set up G-Sync, enable G-Sync slash G-Sync Compatible or if available, G-Sync Ultimate. I would also recommend enabling full windowed and full screen mode. If you notice any performance or flickering issues when utilizing windowed and full screen, just switch this back over to full screen mode. And if available on your display, enable settings for the selected display model. Go to the bottom right, select apply. Under the setup G-Sync section, go to the top, go to display. You can also enable a G-Sync compatible indicator with this small green overlay. If that's present in your game, it means that you are making use of G-Sync and it's working properly. Next up, go to adjust image settings with preview, select the middle option for use advanced 3D image settings, select apply. Go to the left hand side to manage 3D settings, then navigate towards the bottom to vertical sync and switch this on. Scroll up towards the top to low latency mode and set this to ultra. When this is set to ultra, it will automatically cap your game's FPS for your exact monitor refresh rate automatically for you, taking out any guesswork. So for NVIDIA users, you should have enabled G-Sync, VSync and ULLM in the control panel. For AMD Radeon GPUs, right click on your desktop, go to the top right hand side to the settings cog, then go to display. You may have to change the display in which you're selecting to have the options for free sync, adaptive sync, VRR, variable refresh rate, or any of the other names that may appear under here. For me, on this specific display, it supports AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, so I'm going to switch this on. For those of you on Intel Arc GPUs, open the Arc control panel. On the left hand side, go to display, select the monitor you want to select variable refresh rate on for, go to the drop down menu for this and set this to enabled. Go over to the global section, go to the drop down menu for this, where you then have further options. For me, I'm going to be going with full screen and windowed, but if you notice any strange effects with inside of certain games, set this just to full screen and see how you get on. Instead of enabling VSync at the control panel level, like you would with an Nvidia GPU, we'll actually be enabling VSync in every single game we're playing from now on in the in-game menu itself. This wouldn't be recommended on Nvidia GPUs, but for those of you on Intel Arc or AMD Radeon GPUs, this will typically give you the best results for your games on those systems. For a very quick note, VSync isn't 100% necessary, but it will deliver you the absolute smoothest performance possible and should be used when utilizing VRR for the best results. If for some reason your game feels weird or you just don't want to use it, you can go without VSync and still utilize VRR, but you should make use of both together for the best results. For those of you on an Nvidia GPU, you'll need to make sure that VSync is switched off in game as I would recommend utilizing VSync at the driver level via the NVIDIA control panel. We now need to boot into any of your favorite games and do note, you will need to change this setting in any games that you play in the future. It takes just five seconds and it will drastically improve the experience you get on any game. Regardless of the game you've booted, head inside of the in-game settings menu, find vertical sync or VSync in game and switch this off for NVIDIA users and switch it to on if you're on an Intel Arc or AMD Radeon GPU. If you also see an option for double buffering or triple buffering, also switch this off. Feel free to set any of your in-game settings how you typically would. The only thing left to do and most important step is to now implement an FPS cap. There are a few different methods and some are slightly more efficient than others. So in order of best first, if your GPU and game support Nvidia Reflex, switch Nvidia Reflex on as this will automatically cap your FPS slightly below your monitor's maximum refresh rate, ensuring that you always stay with inside of the refresh rate window. So you get all of the benefits of VRR and vertical sync used together, super low latency, 
accuracy, less power draw, and a super silky smooth experience. And yes, this does apply for those of you that enabled ultra low latency mode in the control panel. Reflex is a better method to use, so if your game supports it, enable it in game. And in games that don't support Reflex, then you always have ultra low latency in all games. If your GPU or game does not support NVIDIA Reflex, the next best method to cap FPS is to utilize any methods available in your particular game. There may be a slider or a dial that you can adjust in the in-game settings to cap FPS, or you may have to insert a console command or launch option with inside of applications such as Steam, but there's typically a way to do this, so set the slider to the FPS cap that you should be using for your monitor's refresh rate. Last but not least, if your game or GPU doesn't support NVIDIA Reflex, you don't have an option to cap FPS inside of the in-game menu in any way, I'd recommend utilizing an application known as RTSS or Reva Tuner Statistics Server. To cap FPS utilizing RTSS in any game, have the game running, tab out, open RTSS, hold control, then click on the add button. Unselect everything else besides the game application you're looking to cap FPS for, select OK, select the game application under the list, go to the right hand side to frame limit and cap your FPS here. If you're wondering what FPS cap you should be using, it's super simple, look on screen now and utilize the FPS cap that matches the monitor refresh rate that you have. So if you had 144 hertz, you would cap at 138 FPS in game or using RTSS. If you had 240 hertz, you'd cap at 225. If you're not sure what your monitor refresh rate is, right click on your desktop, go to display settings, you'll then be able to find the refresh rate that you're currently using. You need to make sure that you utilize the FPS caps shown on screen set for your monitor refresh rate to ensure that you never get more frames than your monitor can display. So make sure that you have your game capped utilizing one of the on-screen methods. Even if your FPS is nowhere near what you're capping it to, that's perfectly fine and it's what G-Sync, FreeSync or VRR is designed for. It keeps your monitor refresh rate in sync with the FPS you're getting at any given time. On the flip side of this, if your system is able to get way more FPS than your monitor refresh rate with the FPS cap that you set, then you're only going to be getting benefits there as well because you're going to get the lower power draw, lower temperatures and potential lower input latency. If your GPU usage in your game is near maxed out, unless you can utilize Nvidia Reflex or AMD's anti-lag technology, you could actually see a latency decrease from capping your FPS, which will lead to lower GPU usage, which should lead to a drastic reduction in overall input latency. Set any other in-game settings however you wish to do so, high, low, or in mix. And that's it. Go and play some games, whether they're single player, more demanding, multiplayer, high FPS esports titles. And if you're anything like me, you will never go back to not utilizing this. If in a particular game, you run into the rare instance of VRR flicker, but the brightness of your display seems to be flickering quite rapidly, this can be quite subtle. It's actually quite easy to fix. In the unlikely scenario that you do run into this, in the game you're having the issue in, cap the FPS in that game to something you're able to achieve 99% of the time. Even if that's drastically lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate, that's still fine because VRR will match your monitor's refresh rate to that manual FPS cap for that specific game, still giving you an extremely smooth and fluid experience. If instead of worrying about an FPS cap in all future games, if you would like to just have this set on every game automatically, for those of you on Nvidia GPUs, this is already set up if you're using G-Sync, V-Sync and ultra low latency mode. For those of you on AMD Radeon GPUs, navigate over to the gaming section, make sure this is set to the global profile so it's applied across all games, go down to frame rate control and set the maximum FPS to one of the FPS caps on the screen now. And last but not least, for those of you on Intel Arc GPUs, head into RTSS and instead of individually adding in a game, you can set the FPS cap across the entire system by just selecting global in the top left hand side, go into the right hand side and input in your FPS cap. Once you have that set up on any of those GPUs, every single game you play from now on will be set up properly with an automatic FPS cap. You never have to think about it again. Just boot your favorite game, utilize one of the presets or customize your in-game settings however you would like to, and that's it. Go and play some of your favorite games. Let me know of your results down in that comment section down below. And if you've enjoyed content like this, make sure to check out the playlist section in the description down below or check out one of the two videos on screen and I'll see you guys over there.